Okay, so this is my Hobie Lynx. This is the uh, tournament setup. This is what I would take on a day on the water for a tournament. I'm gonna show you how I've got that rig. A couple of reasons I was really intrigued with the Lynx. Uh, it's shorter than the Pro Angler, the 12 or the 14, which I was interested in to be able to put in the back of the truck without a trailer. It's super light uh, with nothing on top of it, um, as in no seat, no nothing, just the hull, only 47 pounds, which is crazy. And then fully rigged, and what they call fully rigged is with the H-rails, the seat, the rudder, um, and the uh, drive, it's only 67 pounds. I think it's 67. I'll put it on the screen if I, if I mess that up. So it's so incredibly light, it's just amazing. There are some problems with it. Um, because it uh, is just one solid foam core, it slaps on the water like this. If you're in a lot of waves or current, you're gonna get this slapping motion, which uh, isn't always the best. Uh, it's not super stealthy for bass fishing. Uh, but it's incredibly stable. I cannot believe how stable it is. You can stand and fish, you can turn, you can move. It's, it's as stable as my uh, PA-14 really for the most part. It's surprisingly stable. The other thing that's just amazing about this is this 180 drive is, it's tried and true. They've been using this, they've been using 180 drives for decades now, I, I believe and it is just a wonderful piece of technology and it makes this boat super, super nimble. Um, I just can't believe how fast it is and how, and how well it turns. Um, it, it is just super, super nimble. It's, it's, it's an amazing, it is an amazing platform. One other problem, which I think is a serious problem and it's the reason I've decided to sell it is the skin underneath this boat is super fragile. Um, in fact, I don't know what Hobie's thinking because it's really, really fragile. Uh, it is so easy to damage the underneath. Uh, I've already done it once and I was, I mean, I'm super, super careful. Um, so if you're going to buy this boat, you need to seriously think about the fact that it is the skin of the boat is more fragile and susceptible to damage more than any other boat in their line. As far as uh, the front of the boat, they have this tank wall area that just has a bungee. Um, I went ahead and got the, uh, the deck pad kit so the entire boat is covered with this nice foam deck pad. It doesn't come with that. It does, this part of the boat has the deck padding on it, but the rest of it you have to add but it do, it's great for sound dampening and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I, a lot of times will stick my paddle under this bungee or my net. Um, I usually don't store stuff up on the front of the boat though. I added the H-rails and these H-rails in my opinion are, are one of the best parts of this product. Um, not only do they give you a way to add tons of accessories, like you can see I've got on here, but this H-Rail has a track in it also. So you may notice I've got Hobie H-Rail accessories on here like this, but I've also got Yak Attack and other accessories in here because they provide this rail inside the H-Rail, this track inside the H-Rail, which is awesome. If you don't want the H-Rail and you wanna go super minimal, they do have these built-in tracks right here and the same on the side over there. Um, that's if you want to go super, super minimal. And to tell you the truth, now that I've used this boat a lot, I would probably think about using it more as a minimalist machine rather than a full, this whole rig here may look amazing. In my opinion, it's not practical. It's not practical for tournament fishing. If you're going to be a tournament fisherman, you need to get a bigger, better, more solid boat because the problems with the limitations on storage on this boat I think outweigh the fact that it's light. The reality is if you're really fishing at, a, at the tournament level, weight is about the last thing you need to think of when it comes to kayak fishing. All right, so I do have a mount here for a fish finder. I do not have the transducer installed yet, but they have a really nice uh, transducer uh, spot underneath the boat that you can install the transducer. 
One problem with this boat is there's no real tank well to store your battery. So I keep the battery inside here. I have one of these Dakota lithium batteries inside the H crate. One thing I love about the H crate is it has built in rod holders. So you can see I keep my four rods in here. I also added another rod holder here to keep the net. Um, if I need more rods on tournament day, which sometimes I do, I've got a ton of these um, Yak Attack rod holders. These things are awesome. And literally you can put as many down the rail as you want. <laughs> I think I've had as many as eight rods on here before, but normally I try to stick with four to six if I can get away with it. Um, another great thing about the H crate is you can put attachments on these H rails. As you can see, I put a platform on here for my 360 nav light and uh, my flag, which is great. Also, you can install the power pole, which is excellent. It's, uh, I love the power pole. I use the power pole all the time. Although to tell you the truth, in the links, I'm usually fishing smaller bodies of water. Most of the time I can fight the wind without needing the power pole. One thing I will say about the power pole is the battery that goes on the power pole is amazing. This little battery pack will last you literally all day long. It, it's fantastic. So I don't see any need to hardwire uh, my micro anchor and I don't do that on any of my boats. Um, on all three of my kayaks, I have my micro anchor. I have an anchor like this and I just use these battery packs. They're, they're fantastic. They really, they really are great. A couple other things in uh, that I carry, I was gonna show you that I carry on tournament day. I don't like to use a net. I don't use a net a lot, but there's sometimes when it's essential. So I just take a really small net like this. It's easy to handle. I can throw it up here on the front and good to go. I, um, I also always, along with my tackle, I'm not gonna show you my tackle, but I always carry spare line and this little bad boy, super cheap from Plano. It's worked great for me for years. I always carry a lure knocker to, um, you know, when you get a snagged lure. And I've just got this utility rope and attached it to the utility rope and it seems to work fine. This is something I've really gone to on the kayak as well, these bait bags. This is from Six Cents. These things are just, just fantastic. You can basically, you know, on my bass boat, you've got your day box where you put all your stuff to go fish for the day. These are basically day bags. So every time I go to a body of water for a tournament, I build day bags specific to the techniques that I'm gonna use for that body of water. And I'm kind of getting away from tackle boxes on the kayak because of it. I still use tackle boxes, but more and more, I really, really like these. I usually go with the 3,600 size boxes for me. I, I think smaller is better. Um, so I usually don't use the 37s in my kayak crate. Sometimes I will, but most of the time I don't. Uh, I also always have a terminal tackle box. And for me, I found that the Busby terminal tackle box, the, well, they make a specific terminal tackle box, but all it is is a Busby box with small compartments. This is by far the best solution, in my opinion, for terminal tackle. Carry a Leatherman tool in case I have a problem with the drive or something with the boat. I'm not gonna carry a whole toolbox, but the Leatherman tool works good. And super important, pee bottle. Gotta have a bathroom out on the water. This works great. All right, um, for my camera, this, uh, I can't remember where I got this thing. It's called the X Power H7 and it's an attachment for your GoPro. Put it on this RAM mount bar and this thing works great for camera. And then I hardwire it. It comes with a wire, wire that you can plug into your GoPro and then I hard, hardwire it into the Dakota Lithium power box. And that thing will run all day long on that. It works fantastic and just a great, great solution for cameras, for fish finders. The, the, those Dakota lithium power boxes are awesome. Okay, moving up to forward, I've got the, the cart. 
um, you know, which is basically the wheels. Most of the time this thing's light enough and I don't have it loaded with so much stuff that uh, I don't take the wheels with me. But when it's fully tournament loaded, you really need wheels. And I've tried different cart options. I still feel like the Hobie cart is the best option for this boat here. Uh, it does not come with this little bucket, but this Hobie bucket is, I've, is really proved to be invaluable. I keep my used baits in there. I keep my sunscreen, my liquid mayhem, my dyes, markers. My favorite scissors, the very best braid scissors on the planet, the Cuda scissors. And it has a built-in lanyard right in here, retractable lanyard, which is awesome. Then it has a place for your pliers. So this little bucket is, is just fantastic. I also like to keep a scale and I use this uh, Boga Grip scale. Um, no batteries, nothing electronic. It's super reliable and it's, it's compact, it stays out of the way. I just keep it clipped on, on there. Um, I also have my measuring board, my catch board. I keep it tethered to the seat and then I just push it under the seat like that. And then a lot, of time, a lot of times when I'm fishing, I'll take my day bag and I'll just throw it under the seat and that's all I need. I also have a kayak cushion, super great for all day long sitting excellent it comes this is your rudder control back here the rudder is amazing it's it's what it's kind of one of the it's part of the secret sauce that makes this boat so fantastic this rudder look how big it is and this boat turns and manages and maneuvers just incredibly because the because the rudder is so awesome and the steering design for the rudder is amazing. And they've got it available. You can put it on your left side or your right side, whichever you prefer. And then the cup holder does the same thing. It moves left to right. Some people take the cup holder off uh, because it gets in the way of the rods. And so I have one that goes on the H rail too in case uh, that's a problem. Gotta have a PFD and I prefer, prefer the inflatable PFDs. Uh, really solid piece of equipment and they're not hot not bulky that's great here's another deal that i really consider essential this is uh, a hobie product it's a it's a separate rod holder that i keep right up front and what i use this for is when i land a fish what happens as soon as you land a fish catch a fish and you bring them in you got to do something with the rod and there's no room to put this rod anywhere so i just throw the rod in here then I can take my fish off. I can retie my line if I need to, straighten out or sharpen the hook, and then get back to fishing. I also have, uh, I don't use the Anchor Wizard on here. I do have an Anchor Wizard that you could install, but this is a Yak Attack product. It comes with the, I think it comes with the cable for your anchor. And uh, I really like it, the way it's uh, just a separate accessory. And I just, uh, this is what I'm gonna use more likely than not on the links over the power pole. Uh, way lighter, way, e way easier. I also have some mounts up here that I use for cameras. I always have a vertical mounted GoPro up front that I can get, get you know, TikTok type photos. And then this GoPro mount over here is what I put my cell phone on. And take a lot of selfies with your cell phone that way which is great one downside is this little bungee right here is designed to be a paddle holder and it makes no sense it just does not work at all uh it's in the wrong location they've just especially when you put the a trail you cannot use it once you have the a trail but even without the a trail it just does not work well at all so again, Yak Attack has made this awesome external paddle holder. Uh, and because they have the track built into the A-Trail, it screws right into the A-Trail. This is, this little thing on the boat, I probably use more than any other accessory, quite frankly. It's, it's excellent. The paddle pops in here just like that. And it even has bungees if you know, if you're really worried about losing your paddle. It is a great, great product and it works great on the links. So I would really recommend that. And again, these, these Yak Attack uh, 
mounts for rod holders and other accessories are so convenient. They're just fantastic and I love the fact that they work super easy on the links. Okay, that wraps up the uh, Hobie Lynx tournament tour. Uh, if you want to get it, I know there are some guys that fish with this in tournaments. Uh, there's one gal on YouTube called uh, Girl Gone Fishing or something, I think. Really nice young lady. She fishes solely out of a Lynx uh, for tournaments, and she fishes a lot of tournaments. You may want to go look at some of her videos to get more ideas. For me, I don't believe this to be a tournament boat. And I wanted to show you what it looks like rigged as a tournament boat, but it's not for me. I'm not, I'm not going to go forward with this as a tournament boat. But a super fun, super light, throw it in the truck, and go fish a pond, go fish a little lake or stream without a bunch of crap all over it is just, there's no better light boat out there in my opinion. So I hope this was helpful and informative. If so, please subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. Until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy kayak fishing!